Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. Today we're going to create another distortion shader using maps and it's going to be this flame distortion turning an image into a flickering flame. Since it's very similar to what we did in the previous video, I'll try to explain a little bit less and hope that'll be okay. But as always, a short disclaimer first. This tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths. So if you see any mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem, please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. To keep it short by not explaining everything in detail, I feel I need to show a very short recap of what I did in the last video. The main goal of that video was to show how we can store different information in different color channels of a map. Red and green were used for the distortion, blue was to restrict the distortion, and alpha was used as a specularity map. So we have this flag image and the distortion map. First we picked a sample from the red channel and used that as offset to VV text chord to take a sample from the base texture. This alone would make the flag wave smoothly like this. Then we picked a sample from the green channel to get another offset value. This value alone would make the flag wave more erratic like this. And after that we mixed those two offsets to get some more randomness into the flag movement like that. With the sample from the blue channel and by multiplying that with the offset we tied the flag to the pole. Then we added some fake specularity and with the sample from the alpha channel we were able to have a stronger specularity for the golden thread than for the blue thread on the flag. Now for the flame we're going to do something similar. We'll also need four maps in one texture, but this time we're going to use only three channels instead of four. So we're going to see a way to store two maps in one color channel. So this is the flame distortion shader and the distortion map we're going to use. We're going to get the distortion from the red channel, restrict the distortion with the green channel and the blue channel will help us bend the flame. And this is the red channel and the code using it. The map is based on a leopard pattern like in the heat haze shader video, I just played a bit with color levels, curves and blurs and was happy with this one. But to be honest, the original blurred leopard pattern works quite well already. In the first line, we're taking a sample on the distort map at VB text chord times the uniform size to scale the map and plus vec2 0 and the uniform time to scroll the map upwards. And since distort is a vec2, we can end the line with dot rr to assign the red channel to the x and y component of the vec2 distort. But if you have a look at the animated flame, you'll notice the flame is shifted to the left. That's because distort x ranges from 0 to 1 and thus distorts in one direction only. To fix that, we need the second line. By subtracting 0.5 from the x component, the range now is negative 0.5 to positive 0.5. And that centers the flame like shown in the animation now. The next problem to solve is the shape of the flame. As it is known, the distortion pulls the flame upwards along the y-axis away from the torch handle and in the x-axis it looks too straight. To fix that we use the green channel. Let's have a look at the map first. The left half is shaping the x-axis and the right half is setting how the distortion is stretched along the y-axis. These are the gradients I created for this channel. The left half for the x-axis means the x-distortion will be zero at the bottom and top of the flame and will be strongest in the middle. The right half for the y-axis means the flame won't stretch at the bottom of the flame and the closer to the top the fragment is, the more it will be distorted. In the last video we applied one map to each channel. This time we store two maps inside the green channel by splitting the channel into two halves. You could also store more information by creating quadrants if you wanted to. Looking at the code shows how this works. We're creating a VEC2 distort strength. Then the stored strength x is taking a green sample at VB text chord x times 0.5, so from the left half of the map. And the stored strength y is taking a sample at VB text chord dot x times 0.5 plus 0.5, so from the right half of the map. Both lines are multiplied with the uniform strength. With that uniform, we can control the overall effect strength. After getting the samples into VEC2 distort strength, we multiply the red and green channel. So we multiply distort with distort strength. It means where there's no green, there's no distortion. And that's what shapes the flame in the x-axis and ties the flame to the torch handle. With this, we already got a nicely looking flame. Now I'd like to be able to bend the flame. We're going to do that by taking another sample, but this time from the blue channel and just from VB text chord. Multiplying the sample with the uniform bend and adding the result to distort.x bends the flame. Looking at the map's gradient, you can see how this works. The lower the blue value is, the less can be added or subtracted from distort.x. 
Now since the gradient is not linear but a curve, the flame will bend in a curve as well. If the bend uniform is negative, the flame will bend to the right and if it's positive, the flame will bend to the left. And all we need to do in the end is taking a sample from the base texture at BB Textcord plus Distort and assign it to the fragment shaders output GL frag color. So after the previous shader, this shouldn't look too complicated anymore. Now let's have a quick look at the project and run it. This is the project file linked beneath this video. We got lots of sprites in this demo. This is the distortion map. It has to be square, its size has to be 2 to the power of n, and it has to be on a separate texture page, or used for 3D if you're using GMS1. And this is the basic flame sprite. This as well needs to be square, with a size of 2 to the power of n, and be on a separate texture page. Also the flame should be way smaller than the sprite and the origin should be somewhere at the bottom of the flame because that's where we're going to attach the flame to the torch. This is another version of the flame, it looks a bit more like a flame but as you'll see this won't work as well. And the third version with a color ramp and some transparency. And this is the torch, we'll set this sprite to be the object sprite. And the origin is at the top of the torch because this is where we'll attach the flame to. The sprite can be of any dimension and can be on a mixed or cropped texture page, doesn't matter. And this wall sprite I'm just using as a tiled background. Then we got the same again in Pixlocked. The simple flame, the jagged flame, the color ramp flame, the torch and the background. This is the flame distortion shader. The vertex shader is just a pass through shader and the fragment shader is exactly what we looked at a minute ago. There's nothing new to show here. The only thing I'd change for a real game is turn the size uniform into a constant or macro. And if you don't want to animate strength X and Y, you could turn that into a constant or macro as well. In the room on the main instance layer, we got three instances of the flame object. On the background layer, we got the tileable wall sprite. And the rest is just controllers for the demo project and five sliders to set the uniform values. And this is object flame distortion. The object sprite is the torch sprite as we've seen in the room already. And in create event as usual in my demos, there's a description in the title region and it's not important for the shader. And the same goes for the ghoul region, here I'm just setting up the sliders and the button. The important stuff is in the sprite and shader region. First I'm setting up an array of flame sprites and a sprite variable referring to the array's position like I did in the flag distortion tutorial. Then we need to set the distortion sprite and get its texture ID. After that we can set up the shader and its uniforms. Again like in the last video we also need a time variable and the starting value is a random one so all the flame instances start at a different coordinate on the distortion map. The last part is just to demonstrate what this looks like with Pixlocked. I'm setting up a toggle, the camera, the Pixlocked sprites and background layer but I'll show the effect in Pixlocked later. The step event is just for the demo and not important for the shader. This is just setting a new flame sprite when pressing the trigger button on the GUI. And the draw event is pretty simple too. I'm just advancing the time variable by a small amount and I'm grabbing the values for the uniforms from the sliders on the GUI. Strength X is ranging from 0 to 0 0.3, so it's rather small. Strength Y can be a bit larger and ranges from 0 to 1. Size will be something from 0 0.25 to 0 0.75 and the bend factor will range from negative to positive one. After we've got all the needed values, we can draw the torch sprite and then set the GPU's linear texture filter. For pixel art, I prefer to only filter the distortion texture, but for non-pixel art, I prefer to filter all textures to get a smooth result. Now we can set the shader and pass the uniforms. Mind that strength is of X2 and thus needs two values. With the shader set up, we can now draw the flame sprite at the instances X and Y since we matched up the origin of the torch and the flame sprites. And then we can reset the shader and in case of this demo, also reset the texture filter. That's it, so let's run this program. The time slider constantly increases the time variable and thus runs the animation. If time stays static, the animation stops, so it's useful for pausing or if you want to slow down or speed up your game. Strength X changes the shape of the flame. A high value will stretch the flame in the x-axis. It's depending on the first gradient of the green map. Strength Y stretches the flame in the y-axis and it stretches according to the second green map's gradient, not at all at the bottom and fully at the top. Here we can see an important limitation of the shader. 
the GPU won't draw outside the area of the original sprite. And that's why on all my flame sprites, the actual flame is way smaller than the sprite's dimensions. If you want more wide distortion, you'd need to create an even smaller flame, or the same flame on a larger sprite, but you also need to adapt the gradients on the green and blue maps to match the size of the flame. You could also find a technical solution, like creating a new coordinate system in the vertex shader, but in my opinion, the simple solution is a good solution already. As in the previous videos, all the size factor does is scale the red distortion pattern. With this, we'll be able to match the pattern scale to the game art or game art style and uh, flame size or flame type. The bend uniform lets us bend the flame according to the blue map. Here we got the same issue as with the Y strength. The flame cannot leave the area of the original sprite. If you need more space for the flame to move, you need to create more empty space on the sprite. Clicking the sprite button changes the flame sprite to this jagged version. First I thought this could look much better, but seeing it, I think it doesn't. Since we now got a very distinguished shape, we can more easily see that the flame is not a simulation, but just some simple distortion. As for the third sprite, I do like the color ramp, but not the shape. So the simple flame sprite with a color ramp and some transparency would look better. Now for the pixel art versions. As shown previously, I've already prepared everything. I just need to change the pixel art toggle in the create event to true and run the program again. Now I really like this pixel art flame. I think it looks quite believable. But again, the tagged version doesn't work as well. But the color ramped flame does work, at least if you like high bit pixel art like I do. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked this and all the distortion stuff as much as I do. In the next video, I plan to show a shockwave effect using normal maps to distort the application surface. This will look pretty cool too, so I hope you're excited about it. Until next time.